Hey everybody, welcome back. So I wanted to give you an update on that cool new uh, Lego Venom head bust thing that I showed you before. Um, this is the box for it. And we put it together, and it didn't take that long. It's like maybe about an hour build, maybe an hour and a half, maybe two, not too long. But this is the end result. This thing is amazing. It's crazy looking. I mean, I almost kind of want to do like a mod on it so I could give it like the bigger white eyes, you know, kind of make the eyes all crazy like the original Eric Larson Venom. Uh, but it is still pretty cool. And kind of how they had it built kind of or towards the back of the teeth. I mean, you can't really see it that well, but it looks like there's like slime, you know, kind of drool. Oh, yeah, you can kind of see it there. Yeah, see, so it kind of makes it look like he's got some drool in there. And it kind of drips out the bottom of his jaw right there. And I think it'd be kind of cool to maybe put a light in there. So I might try to eventually kind of stick a light in there because the head is hollow. And you can, so you can stick a light in there probably. And maybe it'll shine through in maybe the right spots. Uh, but we'll see. I'll have to save that for a later date, but there it is in all of its glory. The Venom Head Lego Bust. Pretty sweet. Yeah, it would have been crazy, though, if they made, like, the old Eric Larson Venom Head. So, like, the big crazy jaw and all the crazy drool and all the crazy hundreds of teeth, whatever, sticking out. Um, but, yeah, maybe we'll do that later. But this kind of looks more like the more recent version of Venom that we are seeing in the comic books these days. Uh, but beyond that, uh, we also have a mail call today. So we got a few packages, but I want to show you a couple, quick, quick, couple of quick toys that I found. Um, so I found this. This is pretty interesting. This is Yoda's Jedi Starfighter. And this is kind of like the um, second generation Starfighters that you see the Jedi have in basic towards Revenge of the Sith. Well, in Revenge of the Sith, this is the kind that you see kind of more looking, kind of almost like a TIE Fighter style of a cockpit. And I've never seen one, you know, like this because it's kind of short and stubby like, you know, Yoda is. And I'm not sure if they had this maybe in the Clone Wars cartoon, uh, so I'll have to kind of go back and see that. But, you know, because I've only watched the f entirety of the Clone Wars cartoon uh, once, you know, as far as the uh, the full crazy version. Of course, the Cartoon Network one I saw a bunch of times, and that's uh, you can see on the vintage collection in Star Wars stuff on Disney+. Plus. Um, but yeah, so in the newer Clone Wars, maybe they had this particular Starfighter for Yoda. Um, but pretty, pretty kind of cool if they had it made it clear and you could see a tiny little Yoda in there, but you can't. Uh, but that would be way more interesting than, uh, I guess this is. But it's still kind of interesting. And then I also picked up, uh, two new Hot Wheels. Just because I thought it was kind of cool. And it looks like a Mini Cooper that's turned into a little RV. So it's almost like a Volkswagen Bug with a little RV back. Which is kind of interesting because I grew up in uh, Aloha. And in Aloha, they had a, what was called a Loa RV or a Loa trailer. It's like they basically they were RV place or they built their own RVs. And um, they had, like every time we I drove, go by this in the school bus every day, they had a, a Volkswagen bug that basically had an RV camper like on top of it. So it was like the front of a bug with like a whole camper on top. So it was like, it was like a camper bug thing. But it was always pretty cool looking. Uh, so that was one version of the car that I found. And I found this other version that I liked a little bit more after I found that first version. And this one's kind of cool because it's got the silver um, little trailer kind of canopy uh, RV, what do they call it? Camper. Yeah, kind of silver camper and it's kind of a woody style car. So that was pretty cool. If I can get that to focus a little better, that would be amazing. Uh, but yeah, so I thought that was a pretty cool, uh, ingenious little Hot Wheel idea. And it'd be kind of funny to see these bad boys uh going around on a Hot Wheel track, you know, just kind of cruising around. Um, but yeah, beyond that, uh, I took another trip to Cosmic Monkey, and I found some sweet new comic books. Um, kind of filled a couple more holes, like uh, some Silver Age Green Lantern hole. Uh, got Green Lantern number 187. So I think this is the last time that Jon Stewart wears a mask in the Green Lantern comic books, because I think the episode after this, uh, Jon Stewart gets rid of his mask, and you never see him really wear a mask again in the Green Lantern comic books. So that was pretty interesting. I actually picked up two more copies of this, Marauders. Um, this is kind of a newer Marauders issue that came out, uh, because I actually bought this in the regular edition, and then I sold it. Uh, I ended up being able to get 10 bucks for it off of eBay, so I went by, back and bought two more so I could keep one and sell another one and make a little bit of my money back as far as what I'm been spending on some comic books. And I had to go get this one, uh, War of the Bounty Hunters number one, just because I saw in the end you see Kira from the Solo movie. Uh, come back to the end and steal Han Solo and Carbonite. So this is actually a story that's supposed to be taking place between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And this is, yeah, I guess the War of the Bounty Hunters and Kira comes along and steals Han Solo from Boba Fett and it kind of star sparks a whole war uh, between the Bounty Hunters. So I'm kind of interested to get into that and see what that is. And then 
We got Lady Death Metal Decimation number two. And this is the only comic shop in town where you can get these new Lady Death issues. So that was pretty exciting. And then I uh, showed you that I got those Heroes Are Born comic books. It's kind of like a weird alternate Marvel universe. And I didn't have issues number two or four. So I found issues number two and four out at Cosmic Funky because they're really good about having the back issues. So I got that. And then before we, I've talked about uh, the story called Far Sector. And apparently it is another side story of a Green Lantern story. Uh, so all I have is issue number 12 and issue number 1, which is the first appearance of this girl. And her name is Sojourner. Sojourner's her new name, so she's the Lantern. And she has kind of a cool concept on a mask, a Green Lantern mask, because instead of a mask, she wears these kind of cool, like, sunglasses. So yeah, so this is the very first appearance of Sojourner that I actually bought a while back, and I think I showed you guys when I got that. Um, but then I found uh, a couple more issues where I was a Cosmic Monkey, because they had them still for cover price, just sitting there. So I got issue number 12. Well, actually, I already have an issue number 12, but this was the variant that I didn't have. So I bought that just because I thought it was kind of cool looking. And then I got number issue number 10 because I didn't have that. I got issue number 9. And issue number 8. This is the variant edition of that. And then issue number 7. So I'm slightly kind of more caught up on the uh, Far Sector comic books. And, you know, because in, in recent Green Lantern story, basically there's all the Green Lanterns were wiped out. Like, there's only three Green Lanterns left. Uh, one of them is Sojourner. And in the last episode, or last issue, we found out that Hal Jordan is still active. And, because I guess their rings are separated from the whole main power battery of the Green Lantern. You know, because... I guess the, the... Okay, I backtrack. The whole reason why those Green Lanterns got wiped out was because somebody destroyed their whole central power battery. And I guess Sojourner's ring is not attached to the central power battery, and neither is Hal Jordan's. And there's only one other active lantern, which is the Teen Lantern, uh, which I showed you in another comic book. And this is the first appearance of Teen Lantern. Probably showed you that before. But she is uh, part of the Young Justice team. And this is the first time you ever saw her. So yeah, so those are the only three active lanterns still left. And I picked this up just because I thought it was cool. This is Crime Syndicate number three. And I guess in storyline, this is where they have an alternate universe John Stewart. It's kind of an evil lantern. But it's like kind of a different, like they call him Power Ring or Power Lantern. or It's not even called Green Lantern, but, you know, it's basically he's green and he's got, you know, the lantern ring. But they don't call him Green Lantern so much in this series. But I thought that was kind of a cool variant edition, so I picked that up. And then I got the variant edition of Carnage, Black, White, and Blood, number three. Because I didn't see that one prior. And they had it at Cosmic Monkey, of course. So I picked that up. It's a pretty cool looking issue. Carnage there. Kind of beating up on Spider-Man. And then I picked up what's called a Bunny Mask, uh, number one. This is a cool variant edition where it's basically like, you know, punch out a uh, bunny mask kind of thing. So it's just like, yeah, I'll check that out. See what that's all about. And then I filled another hole for my Green Lantern Corpse, uh, the 2006 series. This Green Lantern Corpse number 13. For some reason, I didn't have that. So I only need like two or three more issues to have that entire run. And for some reason, I didn't have this either. Um, Venom Annual. Uh, number one, and I think this is kind of one of the more recent series. I don't know if this is the Donny Cates run or right before Donny Cates, but yeah, either way, I didn't have Venom Annual number one. So I grabbed that, and then I grabbed some older uh, Peter Parker Spectacular Spider Man issues that I didn't have, um, just because I'm trying to kind of get put together all the old black Spider Man stuff where he has the actual symbiote. So it's number 115, looks like he's fighting against uh, Doctor Strange for whatever reason, and then number 110. And looks like he's fighting against Daredevil, for whatever reason. So I guess, you know, when he had the black suit and it was the alien still, he was kind of facing off against heroes because he guess he was kind of a little warped and twisted from the symbiote at the time. And then I got number 94, so this is like the third issue into him having the suit in the Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man run. And this one's kind of cool because it's kind of cloak and dagger. As you know, they're kind of some of my favorite side characters. And I might have this one. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I probably should have double-checked, but... Peter Parker and number 75, and this is kind of the return of Black Cat when you hadn't seen her for a while, and I may have this issue, so I might just have to sell it, but you know, picked it up regardless, and then I picked up uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 268, because I did not have this, and this is kind of a cool looking cover, and I guess there was a side issue of like a web of Spider-Man or something like that, where there's like a, like the, you connect the issues, and the other one is him doing the same thing, but in the regular costume, and, but it kind of like mirrored. So I thought that was kind of cool. Maybe I'll have to go find that mirrored edition of that. Um, yeah, let's get to these mail calls because I have a couple of cool things in here. Um, of course, probably some of them are related to what we were just seeing there. Probably a little bit of Venom, maybe. Maybe a Green Lantern. Um, but we shall see. I kind of 
forget what I was supposed to be expecting right about now. But I guess we'll find out in a hurry. All right. So, oh yeah, this is sweet. So this was a special edition of uh, Venom comic book that I ordered uh, for the release of Venom number 200, which is basically the Donny Cates run number 35, but they call it, you know, Venom 300. And this is the take on the original Marvel masterpiece uh, chase card uh, or Spider-Man versus Venom. And I just thought it was really cool that they made a comic book cover out of it. Actually, I have that card right here. I'll show you that real quick um, while we're at it because my cases are real close. But yeah, see, as you can see, that's that cool cover. Spider-Man kind of, you know, getting surprised by Venom coming out of nowhere. And here's the original card. So this is all kind of chromed out. It's kind of like a 4D embossed card. And this was a super chase that you got out of the Marvel Masterpiece cards. And this is kind of one of the more sought after ones out of that set. Um, of the original Marvel Masterpiece Series 1. So I was kind of stoked to have that one because that's actually the only one I ever got out of that set for as far as the chase cards go. And of course it's my favorite because it's got the old Venom on it. So that's pretty sweet to have the uh, comic cover to kind of commemorate this old card. And I think the original artist was Eric Larson. And as you know, he was kind of one of my old favorite artists back in the day. Uh, but moving on, super stoked to get that one. Because um, yeah, that was a super limited edition uh, from what's the uh, comic book company? Uh, Ultimate Comics. Ultimate Comics, they had the exclusive rights to that particular cover. Uh, let's see, what did I just do with my. Yeah, let's see. Alright, now let's get to the number two on our list of what we're opening up here. So I wasn't quite sure which comic books I was getting today, and I guess that one was a surprise one. So that's pretty sweet that I got that. But that must mean I might be missing one that I thought I was getting. Uh, but I guess we'll find out once I get into what these ones are. This is kind of an interesting packing job. Looks like it, you know, it's all cardboarded up, but not exactly the most secure way to make sure it doesn't get banged up or bent. Um, but hopefully, whatever this is. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this case kind of goes along with what we were just talking about. With Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man. And this is number 92. This is the third time we saw... Actually, you know, in the number 90s, when you see the black suit in the Peter Parker uh, set, uh, but you only see it on the very last page. And then the one after this is where they fight the blob in issue 91. And, of course, it's got Black Cat on there. And got three black Spider-Mans on the cover. So I'm super excited about that because, you know, the more black Spider-Mans, the better. And yeah, so I'm a little closer to completing that run. And then lastly, but not least, let's see what this bad boy is. I'm hoping this is the one I'm thinking it is, because if it is, it's kind of a key book right now as far as one of these storylines is going. And if it's not that book, then I think the book that I was supposed to get, they've got delivered somewhere else. So I might have to be a little bit worried. Uh, but let's see, hopefully it's the one I'm hoping it is, thinking it is. Get into this. Not too much masking tape here, but I guess that's making sure that it's good and secured. Good and secured. Oh yeah, see, I think I'm missing a book somewhere. So this is Venom, the Enemy Within, number two. And issue number three. And I've showed you the Venom Enemy within number one before. It's kind of that glow-in-the-dark cover. So I figured I'd go ahead and complete uh, the set of that by getting issue number two and three. It looks like he's fighting against Demo Goblin and Morbius. So that's pretty exciting to get because I've never had these before. Um, but yeah, make sure if you like my content to like and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.